Welcome to episode six of Ask the Grounding Experts, where our experts from ENS Grounding Solutions answer your engineering questions about the world of grounding and earthing. Today, our very own David Stocken answers a question we get asked all the time by our customers. What is the difference between grounding and bonding? Okay, so what is the difference between grounding and bonding? And now, if you're in Europe, you may call it earthing and grounding, or other parts of the world as well would use the term earthing and bonding, right? So uh, the primary function, there's a couple of things we need to consider on this, is that we have some rules in the fuel industry that we should probably discuss in addition to the rules that fall into the traditional electrical industry. So... In a straightforward sense, earthing or grounding is a connection to earth, whether you intend it to be there or not, right? And this is true in when we're dealing with a traditional refueling scenario. So to start this, let's talk about that. You've got your fueling truck that pulls up and it's going to refuel the forklift, right? So if we were to ground the fueling truck that would mean we would tie it to the earth so that we provide any static electricity that may build up onto it a connection to ground to get rid of those unwanted electrons right same thing the the forklift pulls up to get refueled it would also be tied to earth right and then we would bond the two uh, uh vehicles together so we would take a literally a jumper cable and you would connect it to the chassis of the uh, fuel truck and then you would connect it to the chassis of the forklift and then you would have what OSHA would call both grounded and bonded. So the fuel truck is grounded, the uh, forklift is grounded and then the two of them are bonded together. Now it's okay to start transferring fuel between the two structures because now you've provided an alternate path for those electrons that will form just the the fuel flowing will generate static electricity and that's enough to cause a spark and an explosion so in our OSHA side of things in our health and safety group uh, for refueling they have the same exact terms earthing and bonding or grounding and bonding and that's what they define and guess what it really isn't all that different in our electrical side right we earth something we make a connection to the ground on our earthing side and we have a we can earth the electrical system itself and then we can earth various objects that might come in contact with that uh, electrical system so the primary goal on our electrical side right is first and foremost is to uh, keep uh, hot hazardous electrical parts keep them out of the way of people and uh, equipment and livestock keep them protected from direct contact so we stick it into a cabinet behind a wall or you know we insulate it we protect those hot hazardous parts keep them away from people number one right number two we want to ground or earth and bond all objects that someone can touch any metal that's likely to become exposed we want them all earthed and bonded together right Number two, we want to provide overcurrent protection for each of those objects uh, as well, right? Um, so uh, automatic, uh, uh, and that is in the form of automatic disconnecting systems that no one has to come in and throw a switch. If we have a fault, we want it to automatically handle it. And then number four, we have uh, surge protection for over voltages and other things to protect personnel from that. That is now a requirement, by the way, in both the International Electrical Code and the National Electrical Code, right? We now have that requirement as well for surge protection in all of our cabinets. So when we, the, when we take two cabinets and we bond them together, that would be a bond. So we physically take a 
normally non-current carrying conductive part and we bond them together so that we balance the voltage and the difference in potential between the two and then we earth those to an earth source so that any current that gets on that cabinet has a path to ground. Um, that would be uh, the difference between um, earthing an object and bonding an object, right? So in the International Space Station, for example, we can't earth an object. There's no connection. There's no ground wire um, being drugged behind the International Space Station down to the Earth, right? That's just not how it's working. We're using the chassis. Same thing with your car, right? Your car's on rubber wheels. We're using the chassis of your car as the Earth source, right? So as your car travels along, it's building up static from flying through the, uh, just going through the air. It's causing a static charge buildup. And we have little nubs on the bottom of our car to help eliminate that static. But sometimes you'll feel it. You get out of your car and you step out and you can get a little zap. And that's the charge that's built up on that car because it isn't grounded. But we've bonded all of the various pieces inside that car. So imagine a 747 up in the air and it's flying along and it gets hit by lightning, right? Sometimes the pilots themselves don't even know they've been hit by lightning. In fact, it's estimated that the average commercial airliner is struck by lightning at least once a year at a minimum, right? So if we were to take a, uh, an ohm meter on that airplane and we were to measure from tip to tip, stem to stern, wing tip, measure the resistance, and let's say it was one ohm, right, for the resistance. If we got hit by a 100,000 amp uh, strike of lightning across one ohm, Ohm's law would tell us we would see 100,000 volts form across that airplane. And that's too much voltage for the electronics and things inside of there to handle. It'll blow them up, right? But now, if inside we've reduced the resistance ground by adding copper wires, and we've got an aluminum superstructure, various, now today we've got carbon fiber, but they've filled that carbon fiber with little copper wires and things to reduce the overall resistance across that airplane. So instead of one ohm, let's say we measure it and it's 0 0.0001 ohms, right? We've just lowered that now instead of a hundred, when that lightning hits us, instead of a hundred thousand volts, we only get a thousand or a hundred volts across our airplane. And that's more than enough that our surge protection devices and systems can handle it, right? That's bonding. Right. Now, when the airplane lands, one of the very first things they do, and you may not have ever seen it because it's handled underneath the uh, airplane, but as soon as you land, one of the very first things they do is they run up and they ground that airplane, the chassis of the airplane, and they bond it to a ground point inside right at the tarmac. And that's to balance that difference in potential. Uh, and again, they're coming in to fuel it, so they're bonding and grounding the fuel station and the airplane, just like we talked about earlier, uh, to make sure there's no differences in potential and to allow whatever static charges may have been on that airplane to get them off, uh, get those charges off and down into the earth, right? So the, what is the difference between grounding or earthing and bonding? Bonding is the intentional connection of two conductive objects together to bring them to the same potential so there is no difference in potential and to ground or earth them is to provide a, an intentional path uh, sometimes an unintentional path but an intentional path uh, to the earth so that unwanted objectionable currents transient harmonics have a path to ground thank you very much thanks so much for listening if you found this episode helpful, please give us a quick like down below and subscribe to stay up to date on future educational videos we will be publishing. And feel free to post questions or comments below as well. We might even feature your questions in future videos. If you want to learn more about the amazing world of electrical engineering and grounding, be sure to check out our certified online courses at the links in the description below to kickstart your career. We'll see you next time.